Now, in some cases, ribosomes can be loaded on messages independent of the cap structure. And this uh, most extreme version of this is what's called an internal ribosome entry site, or an iris, where ribosomes directly interact uh, with the message. Uh, so these are RNA structures, which have been most described in uh, viral RNAs. And they, instead of interacting with, um, in the most extreme version here, they interact directly with the ribosome. This is the, what's called an iris from the cricket paralysis virus. And this has a specific RNA structure, which then binds directly to the small subunit of the ribosome, recruiting it to the message and allowing initiation of translation. There are a wide variety of these types of irises. For example, in hepatitis uh, C virus, this uh, iris exists, which recruits the ribosome, but does so using one of the initiation factors, which is present in the normal canonical complex. We should expect that many cellular mRNAs include features like internal ribosome entry sites, and one ongoing area of research is describing those uh, in eukaryotic mRNAs. Now, one of the properties of translation is that different mRNAs translate to different rates. And that's due to really two kinds of features. One are intrinsic differences in how the mRNA interacts with the translation machinery. For example, if we look at an mRNA, there are certain differences which can affect its initiation process. For example, some mRNAs can have strong secondary structure in their 5' end, which prevents the ribosome from loading on or scanning to the AUG. So other mRNAs can have what are called upstream ORFs. This would be an AUG and a stop codon before the normal AUG, so that ribosomes which are loading on the message actually start at this AUG, stop, fall off, and therefore limit how many ribosomes can get to the normal AUG. Iris elements can exist in RNAs, which increase their translation. And then the context of the AUG, that is the local sequence context, can affect how well the 40S ribosome can recognize this AUG during the scanning process. And all of these features then can give kind of personalized rates of translation to mRNAs simply by affecting how that mRNA interacts with the translation machinery directly. Layered on top of those intrinsic differences are regulatory components which are targeted to specific mRNAs. So for example, mRNAs can have proteins which bind to their 5' N, which can actually block the scanning of ribosomes, and therefore block initiation. Similarly, at the 3' N, we can have either RNA binding proteins or microRNAs, which are small RNAs which recognize specific sequences in the RNA and deliver a so-called uh, risk complex for RNA-induced silencing complex to the message, and that these complexes, either protein or microRNA-derived, can inhibit or enhance the function of various translation initiation factors. Finally, some mRNA uh, contain within them binding sites for specific proteins, which when bound, actually lead to modifications of the mRNA. And most notably with regard to translation, are proteins which bind the 3' end of mRNAs and then promote the extension of the 3' poly A tail. Extending the 3' poly A tail can promote translation by a number of mechanisms, but most uh, likely it loads the poly A binding protein, which then interacts uh, with the cap complex, uh, providing a better mRNA protein complex for the loading of ribosomes. Translation can be also regulated in a global way by alterations in the functions of specific initiation factors. So for example, uh, when growth is stimulated, the TOR pathway is enhanced, and that leads to phosphorylation of a protein that binds the cap binding protein. So when that protein is phosphorylated, it lets go of the cap binding protein. You end up with more cap binding protein, and that promotes uh, the loading of initiation factors on the 5' prime end of mRNAs. So you increase translation generally. Similarly, during a wide variety of stresses, this initiation factor EIF2, which is involved in delivering the tRNA, the initiator tRNA, to the ribosome, gets phosphorylated. And when it's phosphorylated, it gets stuck in a uh, GDP found form with a translation factor called EIF2B, which reduces your ability to form these 43S pre-initiation complexes. So there is global control of translation uh, by the phosphorylation or modification 
of various key translation factors.